I'm Aaron Zimola, and you're watching Marketing Tip Tea Time, where we spill the tea on the marketing tips and tricks that really matter. Today is the first episode of season three of Marketing Tip Tea Time, and I have to just thank everyone who has helped us along this journey to get to where we are today. It has taken a lot, and it's been quite a ride to go from a GoPro upstairs in our conference room to the studio here with all of these lights and cameras and all of the people that are helping us out. I mean, we are so appreciative here at Zova Marketing and at Marketing Tip Tea Time to be able to put on such a fantastic production for everyone who needs this sort of information. Now, before we dive into the first episode, I'm actually going to talk about our sponsor, thank you once again to Whole Brain Consulting. Really, we are so appreciative of you. Whole Brain Consulting is an outsourced operations consultancy that specializes in the consumer products industry, providing solutions catered to your production. Services include QA, QC, supply chain, operations, logistics, R&D, and private equity due diligence. Thank you so much once again to Whole Brain Consulting and Brandon Hernandez. Now, we have an amazing guest that I'm so excited to introduce to you all today. We have John Robson. John Robson is a photographer, and John, John Robson's photographs tell the story of the makers and the shakers that put their heart and soul into their work. From culinary artists to ranchers and craftsmen, he admires a hard work ethic that creates calloused hands and the love that goes into creating a unique experience. Help me in welcoming John Robson. Hey Aaron, how you doing? Hello, how are you, John? Doing great. Glad to be here. It's great to have you on the show, Phil. I um I can't hear him actually. Something's gone. I don't. I lost my. Can you hear me? Nope. Can anyone hear me? I can't hear you either, Phil. Great. I can't hear anything. No sound. All right, let's try one more time. Hello. <laughs> Hey, Aaron. Huh, interesting. Well, uh, while Phil hey, tries to figure out <laughs> why I cannot hear anything, of course, you know, it's the first episode of the season, so sometimes it's difficult for all the technology that we have going on to do this exactly perfect. But uh, I'm a... It, it's all. I can hear other things. I can hear when I turn the um, when I turn the show on. It's not coming through NDI. Okay. Yep. That was our producer Phil, everyone. Thank you, Kirk Vogel. Kirk Vogel is uh, one of my old teachers. All right. Can I hear anyone now? I'm going to ask the first question so we can get rolling. Um, but first, that sounds great. I'm actually going to talk about the tea. So today, John, I have sent this tea, which is Natural Grocer's Organic Jasmine Green Tea. John wanted a loose leaf green tea. We actually just had a Natural Grocer's that went uh, in down the street from our office, essentially. And so we thought we'd try this. This is the first time I've ever tried this tea and our uh, tea aficionado who was actually out when we chose this tea Keith Whiff said no don't send him that but we did it <laughs> anyway and so we're gonna get to try this tea together I'm gonna go ahead and um, my parents actually got us this very nice glass tea kettle so everybody can see and Phil if, if you're watching the uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the tea into my into my glass here let's see here we get the tea cam Oh, that's a nice pour. Look at that. Do, 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 do. Wow, fantastic. Okay, that is a big mug. That's a very big mug. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and taste this. John, if you want to, I don't know if you have, let me see here, if you want to taste it as well. Yep, there it is. It's very floral. It's very... Quite floral, it, The yes. jasmine is... <laughs> is there that that is a that is that is jasmine that i can i can definitely taste scale from one to ten john what's your what's your opinion on this Ooh. 
I'm giving it a six. Okay. It's a little too floral. I still can't hear you. I'm just asking questions in the dark. Oh, sure. Can you hear a lot? Give it a yeah. six. My producer. Oh, a six. Fantastic. Oh, good. Jo Thank you, Josh. All right. Josh, our producer, coming in clutch here. All right, John, let's see if I can hear you now. How about now? There you are. Yeah? Yeah, good. I got All I right. got the I got one of our feed tablets here. Outstanding. Um, okay. So fantastic. Thank you everyone for you know hanging in there. <laughs> but first, um, like I said, this tea, it's uh it's it's way more floral than I'm used to. So you know, it's probably like a five or six to me as well. We had some fantastic jasmine pearls once on the show. But um, yeah, this this is actually, I think, decent if you're in a pinch and Natural Grocers is a block yeah. away from you. So now we're going to dive into John Robson because John Robson is an amazing photographer. He has done some fantastic work and I love his work. You should go follow him actually. Go to his Instagram, uh, go to his Facebook, go to all of these areas uh, and try and find him and look at his work because his work is absolutely amazing. Now we're going to do a quick rapid fire here, some questions very quickly and just, you know, whatever pops into your mind first. So first, print, <laughs> print or digital media? I'm, I'm really indifferent on the subject. I like both of them, and I think they have pros and cons to both because I just want good stories and good images. If um, you're not disrupting me, then I'm going to partake in that media. But I despise pop-up ads as much as billboards. So <laughs> mm -hmm. that's kind of how I see things. Yep, yep. I agree with that. <laughs> Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Yeah, I, I don't juice? really dabble too much in Facebook. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Radishes, eggs, or chives? Eggs. Mm. I eat them every day. Okay, you gotta okay. Gotta know how to make a decent set of eggs. Yeah, that's true, that's true. And then favorite subject to photograph? I get asked this question every week. And people are never ready for my answer. And it's always that um, I want to photograph the sexy things in life, which means cool people, cool businesses, and cool events. I don't care what the subject is. I just want to be able to have fun with it. And I am more concerned about photographing people that are passionate about life and about their business. Okay, so it's more about the emotion of it to you, the, the sexiness, Absolutely. the mood. Yeah. Okay, that, yeah. that's awesome. Because it so comes it just, through it, in the photos. Right, and so then that's, that is your favorite subject, is just the most uh, thought-provoking sort of emotion that yeah. you can have. I yeah. get that. Cool and stuff. Let's just say that. <laughs> cool stuff. Cool stuff. I like that's That's simple. That's simple. Um, we're going to dive into a question from somebody who knows you. He says he's worked out with you before, and that is Bob Adams submitted a question. He wanted to know, <laughs> he, well, do you have a story on Bob before we get into his question? Too many that cannot be discussed here. <laughs> oh, man. So he wants to know how you stay competitive and get repeat business. Well, that's a great question, Bob. I'm glad you asked that. Um, I think the answer is really one and the same. You, you are competitive and you retain your business through the same means. And the first, I would say, is finding those clients that value your work, your style, and your voice. Because when you find that, and it's going to be through a lot of trial and error to do so, but when you find that, that's a great start. Oh, yeah. so and once you start to... that relationship, it's really on you to do the work. And how I go about it is I show up early to photo shoots. Uh, I hate being late. So show up early and then be present during the whole shoot. So stay focused on the task at hand um, and then incorporate your own voice into that project. Um, it doesn't do you any good to follow the trends because everybody else is doing that and you want to be unique. So you're competitive and, then I keep retaining them through great customer service. 
So it's good work paired with great customer service, and that helps foster a really great relationship. Okay. And I noticed you talked about your voice a little bit, and most of the time people yeah. associate voice with writing. How do you evoke a voice within a visual piece of art? Well, all your photos are telling stories. So even though they're not spoken or read, you still can be able to tell a story from that visual image. Um, okay. Especially portraiture and your other image, it's going to evoke emotion. Right. Okay. That, that makes sense. And when you're in this kind of, you know, creative mode, what are some of the steps you take? What are your steps within your creative method that really helps you to capture the story, capture those emotional shots, uh, even when, as we know, a lot of your work is inanimate objects? Right. Um, my intent is to produce work that can go up on my wall. Like, I have a high bar of what I want the end product to be. So I am looking for unique images. I am looking for um, certain juxtaposition between the images and mm. subjects. Um, really, I just try to keep things simple, relaxed, and real. Uh, the more I fuss about something and or the more I interject myself into the situation, um, the less real it's going to be. And then when you lose that, you lose all the emotion to it. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's about setting that high bar and, and, and evoking through juxtaposition and, and the way that you are um, essentially coming at your subject matter to, to think, how can I make this sometimes objects that are carrots, you know, something very ordinary, how can I make this sexy is kind of what you're thinking. Right. That, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And yeah. what, it's really what appeals to me. How does this, how does framing this image appeal to me? Um, something that's incredibly straightforward is less appealing than something that has shadow and contrast and is a bit off-centered. Right. And so, you know, we talk, we've been talking about food a little bit here, and you've almost mm -hmm. been kind of deemed the high-end food photographer for Northern Colorado and, and maybe even beyond that. Um, I know that whenever I see your food images, they're everywhere. Your food images are absolutely everywhere. So, you know, how did you get kind of niched mm -hmm. into people coming to you for food projects? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a really good story, actually. Um, <laughs> This is uh, 2016. Uh, I was working as a graphic designer, and my coworker, she texted me over the weekend saying, I met this really cool couple. They're looking for a photographer for their outdoor dinner event. And I really brushed it off. I was mostly a designer at the time, I was doing some photography. I've had a long history of photography. I started it when I was a teenager, but I never really did any freelance work so i was really hesitant and intimidated at the thought so i brushed it off so come monday go to work and she's just proud of me you gotta call Juan. you gotta you gotta do this they're super cool people their food's amazing you're gonna love it so i don't know if you've ever been in the situation where you're really hesitant about something and right. then you get to that point of wanting to do it and you contact them and that in between time you're just waiting for that person to contact you back because you want it so much um yep. that's kind of the process and then um the couple they have a catering business and their names are julian juan so they run julian juan's kitchen um they do a lot of high-end catering in northern colorado and this was their second outdoor cooking event and this is really before they took over the, the catering scene here. And what happened was they had a photographer at the first event who okay. didn't really jive with them from what I hear. And I came in, this was my first job. And from the first click, I looked at the LCD screen. I'm like, this is going to be easy. This is gold. Like everything was just right. 
It was there. It was all. So it was already together. beautiful. There was already this. It was. I just put it all together, and then it was through my worth at work ethic of being present and photographing in an editorial style. That's how I like to shoot. I like to tell that story, yeah. and it's not only capturing the food. It was capturing the process. It was capturing the prep, the service the people enjoying the food. So you're capturing the whole atmosphere of the event and putting it together. And then right. I turned that around in a few days and they loved it. I, I think they told me they cried after searing it. So we met wow. uh, a few days later and I became their photographer and it's been five years now and 70 some shoots for them. And that's how I got into food photography. And that just kind of some shoots. Yeah. And it just snowballed from there. And it, it took a while because my second food client wasn't until two years later, which was pumpkin Creek ranch. And I photographed all their raw cuts of meat for their website. Oh, I love and it the, just I love kept building shots. from there. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're really, it's really premium beef. So it's, it's right. great to shoot and doing editorial work. It just kept building. And when you put yourself out there, you get known for whatever you put yourself out there. So I was just posting food all the time and right. that's how I got it. And, and then I guess I have a quick question about the way that you, yeah. that you do that. Actually, this is a personal question for me is that I've noticed that you take other simple elements in the food and, and you stage it in a way that's just really striking, like the salt or the single rosemary sprig what kind of goes through your mind about selecting those <laughs> ingredients and putting them in that sort of fashion? It's finding what my subject is, what my, my focus is on for that particular frame and just trying to construct it in a unique manner. That's eye engaging to me. And that's right. It's um, I don't, when I photograph for them, I don't move things around. It's just how it presents itself. And that's how I like to shoot for the most part. I like to take things in as they naturally occur. Right. Wow. So <laughs> it's not much uh, more explanation than seeing it as it is. And, and it's the simplicity the, of, of yeah. the way that you put it together. These are things that normally go together but then mm -hmm. in a way that you don't see them, which is kind of this de deconstructed palette mm -hmm. of all the ingredients for that steak. Mm -hmm. um, go check out his work if you oh, haven't already. If you're Instagram asking or, about the, the, the meat photos and how those I meat laid those out. Those blew my mind. Um, the salt was, I do have a thought process behind the salt. So I was more talking about like Julian Juan events, the live events, right. but stage stuff like the meat, um, I had the salt kind of flow in the way that the the fat pattern was. Oh, so that marbling. was kind yes. of my concept of the marbling and loosely tying it into that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's more sprinkled, it's more random, but um, just trying to figure out how things relate to each other. Now, the rosemary and any other accompaniment is just um, what's going to add to the meat and not distract from it. That is beautifully simple. That's it. <laughs> that is beautifully simple. Now I know I mean, you know, honestly, you've done... yeah. Those I was gonna shots say, are done you... just on my kitchen floor, natural light. On your kitchen um, floor. It's yeah. On a backdrop and that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That... You, do, you do not know understand how simple some of this stuff is. My gosh. Yeah, um, that's amazing. That I would have never guessed yeah. that that is on on your kitchen floor with um, <laughs> the backdrop. Um, you know, you've done it's, all these yeah, food. It's on a surface. Right. You've done all these food projects and you have a really exciting one that I I kind of like, I checked it out. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your recent NFT project and, and making some of your moody mm -hmm. food pictures into an NFT? Sure, um, it didn't start out as an NFT project. It kind of evolved into that. But last spring I 
bought into a food share. So uh, if you're familiar with the CSA, which is community supported agriculture, I bought into that and I had the idea of photographing it every week. It was 25 weeks long. So I knew it would be a nice long project. And I just brought home the vegetables or the fruit or whatever it was and put it on a back black surface on my kitchen floor and <laughs> photographed it. It was, it was seriously, that's all it was. And I did minimal styling to it. Uh, I just tried to pick out things that had character. Uh, a lot of the vegetables still had dirt on them. So that just made it even more unique and photographed it from there. And throughout the 25 weeks, I understood that this was a project with momentum and I wanted to have an exhibition with it. So in December, I had uh, an exhibition at Wolverine Farm in Fort Collins, and it featured seven images from that series. Uh, they were all, I mean, ones right there, right there. Yep. And the other ones behind me. Um, so For there are large For those of you listening prints. on a podcast, there are some beautiful <laughs> prints of his work behind him. <laughs> <laughs> you can check them out on my Instagram or on my website, John Robson photography. Um, yeah, I printed them. The image size is 16 by 24 and the frames are 20 by 28. So they're pretty large format. They're statement pieces. Mm -hmm. um, but with printing something that large, it, it comes at a cost. So I printed seven, right. uh, but there were 31 and right around Thanksgiving is when NFT photography was really taking off and I learned about that. So I decided this is a good way to get this whole series out to the public. Right. And that's how they wow. became NFTs. And I just made the second drop this morning. So there's 14 up on OpenSea. Amazing. I checked it out. Um, if you go to his Instagram and click into his bio and click on that, it'll take you to his link tree and then you can see all of his different projects and work there. Now on to our next question from Alyssa Youngval, admittedly my wife, and that is, <laughs> what's some advice that you'd give to an aspiring photographer? Okay, Alyssa, here we go. Are you looking? You're either a photographer or you're not. So if you're aspiring, you're not a photographer. So you got to make that declaration. Are you a photographer? And once you put that out, say, I'm a photographer, you got to do the work because just having a camera is not doing you any good. You have to do the work and then put it out into the public. You got to share it. So people see that you're a photographer. And from there, that's, that's really the first step. Um, it's all about doing the work, not waiting for inspiration. Because if you just wait for inspiration, it's it's not going to come. Uh, you got to get yourself <laughs> out there and right. do it. Uh, Jack London had a great quote. It says, don't loaf and invite inspiration. Light out after it with a club. Because okay. when you do, you will find something similar to it. And that's, that's how you got to go about it. Um, okay. So you just got to do it. Just get it done. <laughs> you got to do it. You got to do it. Um, I mean, keep progressing. You got to have ambition and similar amount of patience and form <laughs> relationships and really treat right. others like you want to be treated. Right. And so that, I mean, yeah. I think that's advice that really is for any sort of it's, um, yeah. area you want to go to. It's into universal. It. Right. Yeah. That is that is some fantastic advice there. And, uh, you know, we've covered a lot about your career. We've covered how you stay competitive and get repeat business and how you go early, you do the work, you get things done. Um, you really look for sexy, emotional ways to portray sometimes everyday objects. And you use that juxtaposition to really bring out emotion in people. You have become a food photographer by some somewhat <laughs> some sort of a happenstance chance of mm -hmm. getting a few um, pretty good gigs in that world and ended up falling in love with it and you use your kitchen floor 
to do a lot of, oh, there it is. There is, there is some of his work. You use the kitchen floor to get a lot of these beautifully striking shots of, of food and meat. And now you have these NFT projects that people can enjoy this. Mm -hmm. The public, they can enjoy your Instagram. And they can also, I saw, they can order prints um, yes. of your Moody Foods. So limited edition, there, one of three. <laughs> oof. So, you know, is there any more advice you'd give to anyone who just wants to get more creative or wants to kind of get into the marketing world of some sort? Mm -hmm. um, get yourself out there uh, through networking. Find those avenues that you want to be in. Uh, like we were talking before the show, we met through a uh, a food marketing networking event and I wanted yeah. to get into food photography more and you, you got to put yourself out there. Um, that's the big thing. Moral of the story, everyone watching, students especially, get yourself out there, do the work, show up early. That is going to be the last question of Marketing Tip Tea Time with John Robson. John, we thank you so much. One quick thing, everybody watching on the show right now, if you actually go to the link that I am providing, poof, um, in the Facebook chat, go if you go and you subscribe to Zova Marketing between now and our next show, which is in two weeks, we are going to send you the same tea that John and I drank on the show, which is just okay. So <laughs> um, you can get yourself a, a, a big old bag of four ounce jasmine green tea from Natural Grocers. It'll be shipped to you. Uh, when we pick that. So please go subscribe. You have two weeks to do that. We need more subscribers and viewers. I mean, we want more subscribers and viewers because we want to give you all of this great information. Again, thank you to everyone. Thank you to Josh, our in-studio producer, Phil, our technical producer upstairs. Thank you to Peter Romero, our graphics and sound supervisor. Thank you to my parents for uh, <laughs> buying most of the teaware here. Uh, and thank you to all of our viewers and everybody who submits questions on a regular basis. We love you all so much and we thank you for supporting Marketing Tip Tea Time. Thank you to John Robson, everyone. Round of applause. What beautiful photography and some great advice that he's given us today. We hope to see you in two weeks for our next show with author Rachel Kelly, who wrote, she is now on her ninth book of the Color World series. She uh, is a fantastic author and they have a lot of things going on. Um, they actually have audiobooks and a movie maybe coming out in the future, but we'll talk about that in two weeks. And again, thank you to Whole Brain Consulting, our season sponsor. And until next time, we will clink our tea one last time, John. Thank you, everyone. Nostra vi. Cheers. It's on chair. Oh, that's some, that's some great. Oh, those shots are beautiful. <laughs>